Human progress is neither involuntary nor inevitable. Every step towards the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggles, which is the tireless exertion and passionate concern of dedicated individuals like Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, respected viewers, brothers, and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the first episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host Ahmad Ali. Before I commence further into the episode, uh, join me as we send our salutations upon the Master of Martyrs and his beloved brother, the Moon of Bani Hashim. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sayyidi wa Mawlai, ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Assalamu alaikum wa ala rawahiti halat bi funaik. Assalamu alaikum, ya Ibn Rasulullah. Alaikum in Islam, abadam ma baqit wa baqa al-layl wa al-nahar. O my Master, Aba Abdullah, peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. O oh, the son of the messenger of Allah, peace be upon you and peace be upon the souls that sacrificed their lives for your cause. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon you everlasting and omniscient. Respected viewers, once again, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. During the past 1400 years, we do apologize for the noises in the background, uh, but the lovers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, are commemorating uh, the first day, uh, the second night of Muharram in the city of Karbala, near the holy shrine of Imam Al Hussein and his loyal brother Abil Fadl Abbas. So, for that reason, uh, we do send our condolences to the Ahlul Bayt and to the Imam of our time. May Allah hasten his reappearance. But during the 1400 years, an unparalleled amount of literature has been written on Imam Hussain alayhi salam in every language across the world. And mainly what is written about Hussain alayhi salam is regarding the indescribable sacrifice of Imam Hussain at Karbala in the 61st year after Hijrah. Almost all Muslims unite in the idea that Imam Hussain alayhi salam sacrificed his life so Islam does not go into extinction. However, Muslims begin to disagree and differentiate in the interpretation of Islam that Imam Hussain sacrificed his life for. Some people indicate that the Islam that Imam Hussain sacrificed his life for was La ilaha illallah and do not recognize the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. And those individuals, uh, I do advise to learn more about Ahl al-Bayt but that's not the idea. But such individuals do not recognize the wilaya of Ahl al-Bayt Hence, they do not testify to the third testimony that we testify to. In our call for prayer, there are three testifications that we do. The first one is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. The second one is Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. The first one is we testify that there's no God but Allah. And the second one is that the uh, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And the third one is that Ali is the representative of Allah on this earth and the successor of Prophet Muhammad. Shia in general believe that the wilaya of Amin Muni Islam, the third testimony and the wilaya to Ahlul Bayt is an essential part, an essential position within the Islamic faith and within uh, the Iman of every single believer. However, when we do go on discussing uh, the ways that Ahl Bayt Islam lived their life, we find that from Prophet Muhammad, all of them sacrificed themselves for the sacred cause. And this sacred cause is safeguarding that third testimony, which is La ilaha, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Ali and Waliullah which without it, Islam, the day of judgment, heaven or hell would become meaningless. From the first event of the assassination, assassination of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, when Ali ibn Abi Talib in that incident placed himself in the position of Rasulullah, in his bed instead of the Prophet, it shows the dedication of Ali ibn Talib towards uh, the religion of Islam. Yet eventually and unfortunately, Prophet Muhammad was poisoned and killed in propagating the true Islamic teachings regarding 
Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, and the Ahlul Bayt. Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her, was crushed behind the door when she came forward to protect Ali ibn Talib السلام, when she met her martyrdom. Imam Ali, his sons, Imam al-Hassan and Hussein, and the Imams descending from Prophet Muhammad, this purified progeny, all of them tried all their lives to let the candle of Islam, to radiate the candle of Islam and the light of Islam through their sacrifices until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his last Imam al-Mahdi may Allah's his reappearance into occultation to test us to see that if we, if, if we are representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we truly represent Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam what are we willing to sacrifice for the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam it was in Allah's knowledge that not everyone would follow the Ahl Bayt السلام, and follow the leadership of Imam Ali Abi Talib This is why he decided to put a test, to put every single person to a test, reward and punishment to the people if they accept and reject the wilaya of Ahl Bayt and especially the wilaya of Ali Abi Talib Thus, Without the wilaya of Ali ibn Talib السلام, we strongly hold to this belief that without the wilaya of Ali ibn Talib السلام, no deed or act of worship is accepted or is credited on the, day, on, on the hereafter. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Ahlul Bayt in Ziyarat al al Kabira, they say that with us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began, began His creation and with us He ends everything. فَتَحَ اللَّهُ بِنَا وَبِنَا يَخْتِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began everything with us and ended everything with us. On the way, when Muhammad Islam was making his way, his, uh, was making his way to Kufa, people asked him, "What was the purpose of your journey through the deserts?" Imam Hussein Islam replied very beautiful. He says, "To revive Islam and uncover the assassins of my grandfather, my mother, my father, and my brother." To revive Islam was the key point of the Imam's uprising. However, in brief, we find that if we go throughout the books of history, we find that numerous, hundreds of narrations have been said by Prophet Muhammad wasallam in the honor and in the elevation, in the elevated status of the Ahlul Bayt and uh, his, his grandsons. And if we find that throughout the 23 or 24 years of the Prophet's life when he was propagating Islam, we find that people who came after the Prophet tried to remove Ahlul Bayt Islam, shift them aside. We, f we find from uh, the three caliphs up until the Umayyad dynasty and up until the Abbasid dynasty, and none of them could stop the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, They try to stop the nur of Allah, to eliminate the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their actions, through their expressions, through uh, their, their, their daily lives. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants His nur to prevail. In a divine tradition by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on, on the tongue of Prophet Muhammad, He says, Ya Muhammad, khalaqtakum min nuri. I have created the Ahlul Bayt. I have created you from my nur. I have created the Ahlul Bayt. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to Prophet Muhammad, saying that I have created the Nur, or the Ahlul Bayt, sorry, from my Nur. And what more beautiful. So when they say, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, they try to eliminate the Nur of, uh, or to block the Nur with their uh, facial expressions or with anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants His Nur to prevail, and that's Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. However, a question is often asked is why did Imam al Hassan alayhi salam sign the peace treaty with Muawiyah yet Imam al Hussein alayhi salam rose and did not live under the unjust commands of and demands of Yazid inshallah we'll answer this question but after this short break so do stay tuned this is one of the first mawakib we have seen coming out in this month of Muharram as you can see, they have the drums to reenact the battle of Karbala, the war drums. They are shouting Haidar in the name of Amir al-Mu'mineen. 
الحمد لله وشكر ذا مونز الحمد لله وشكر ذا مونز ار ان فول فول حرم مود ذيس از ذا مشعل اوف امام الحسين ذا شيب اوف سالفيشن جاست كوم فاست ذيس از ذا قبة اوف امام القاسم ات از ان ريمبرنس امام القاسم ذا يوث هو واز Preparation for marriage, ready for marriage, but he died shaheed in Karbala, the son of Imam al-Hassan. The mawqib has stopped outside the door of Imam al-Hussein. The trumpet you hear is a salute in honor of Imam al-Hussein. Each mawqib goes past and does the salute. And it's ended with the drums to conclude or begin the mawqib of Mashaq, which is what is happening now. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Hussein. Uh, it was actually beautiful to see that atmosphere uh, of the first month of Muharram. Uh, but before the break, we talked about uh, or the frequently asked question, uh, which is why did Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam sign the peace treaty with Muawiyah, while Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam did not bow down to the unjust demands of Yazid bin Muawiyah. Imam Al Imam Ja'far Muhammad al-Sadiq he says, he replies to this question through explaining the verse uh, which is found in the fourth chapter, verse 77. He says that the Muslims were asked to refrain from fighting under the leadership of Imam al-Hassan to remain content with the treaty did, did dictated by Imam al-Hassan, but were strictly ordered and commanded to fight with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam in Karbala. Another tradition that is related to this, which gives an honor to Hussein alayhi salam, that this verse was revealed in his honor, it says that in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made it mandatory for Imam al Hussein to fight the Munafiqeen, the people who are the hypocrites that, were, that existed at that time, the Munafiqeen, and made it obligatory upon every creation on this, every inhabitant on this planet, on earth, to aid Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam in his cause. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also states uh, in the 22nd chapter, verse 40, those who have been exiled from their homes without a just cause, except that they say Allah is our Lord. And had there not been Allah's repelling some people by others, certainly there would not have been pulled down cloisters and churches and synagogues and mosques in which Allah's name is much remembered. And surely Allah helps him who helps his cause. Surely Allah is most strong and almighty. If we focus on the first and the last portion of uh, this verse, this Quranic verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the people who were forced to leave their homes just because they want to revive Islam, just because they want to save Islam, just because they call out that our Lord is Allah. Calling, saying Allah is our Lord is not enough. It takes action. 
with saying Allah is our Lord, Muhammad is our messenger. It takes action and by saying Ali Wali Allah, Ali is our leader, Ali is the representative and the successor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this takes action to implement this. However, in Tafsir al-Qummi, it is referred to in this verse, he says in, uh, in Tafsir al-Qummi, uh, which is uh, a very reliable source uh, from our uh, Shia school of thought, the followers of Al-Bayt alayhim salam that this verse was revealed in the honor of Muhsin alayhi salam who was forced by Yazid to leave his home, to leave Medina and was and war was imposed on him and eventually he was martyred in the land of Karbala right here. However, after establishing that Imam Hussain alayhi salam had to leave Medina, the, the city of his grandfather and had to fight the Munafiqeen, the uh, the Munafiqeen, uh, the hypocrites of that time, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, just to give the correlation between the peace treaty and Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Hassan, when he was divinely commanded to refrain from uh, fighting Muawiyah and signing the peace treaty, they wanted the Islamic Ummah, the followers of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, they wanted them to reorganize themselves so they can go and support Imam al Hussein alayhi salam in Karbala. This is the reason. Now, we came to a point that I would like to actually emphasize on, which is tonight's main important point is that what was at stake at Karbala? If we touch upon this question, what was at stake in Karbala? What, did, what forced Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to leave the comfort of the city of his grandfather and come all the way to Karbala or his destination Kufa. Why? The same reason that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died for or was killed, poisoned. The same reason why the ribs of our beloved Fatima Zahra Alayhi Salam were broken. The same reason why Ali ibn Abi Talib Alayhi Salam during prayer, why he was leading the Muslim Ummah, the nation in congregational prayer, Mulja, may Allah curse him, struck him on the head. The same reason that led to the poisoning of Imam al Hassan, and that same exact reason that led Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to leave the city of his grandfather Medina and head towards Karbala. And that's the reason is reviving Islam, protecting and safeguarding the third testimony. Some people may ask, is that how is the third testimony? We testify that Ali is the successor of Prophet Muhammad and is the representative of Allah. How is this related to Imam al Hussein reviving Islam? Well, if you go through history and if you go through the narrations narrated by both Sunni and Shia, we'll see and you'll find that on the day where Ayyub Talib was appointed as a successor, Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a verse to Prophet Muhammad to tell the entire Islamic Ummah. He said, O Muhammad, tell them, today I have perfected your religion and today I have completed my favor upon you and satisfied the, the Islam to be your religion. So Islam, the 23 years that Prophet Muhammad had to endure the hardships was not complete until he publicly announced to the entire nation that Ali Talib is his successor. If we looked at this, the people at that time, 50 years later after the Prophet, what did the Ummah do after the Prophet? Imam al Hussein alayhi salam saw that Islam was fading away by the corruption of the Umayyads at the hands of Yazid. To the point where Yazid states, Bani Hashim, the sons of Hashim, played a game, game played into power. No revelations revealed and no news has come. If we read this, I'll read it again. Bani Hashim, the sons of uh, the Hashimite tribe, game played into power. No revelations revealed and no news has come. At first he reveals to the tribe of Bani Hashim, the sons, Prophet Muhammad, he is from the tribe of Bani Hashim. Imam Abu Talib, everyone from the Hashimite tribe, they disguised themselves with Islam, with the religion, to get into power and rule over the nation. So they were game playing. And in the second part, he says he rejects the authenticity of the revelations of Islam, the revelations that Prophet Muhammad came with. And he said that there's new, no news has come from Islam. 
if, if, if we get to understand this, this is the person that was leading the so-called Muslim Ummah at that time. And actually it wasn't just rejection, it was denial. Yazid denied that revelations actually came down to Prophet Muhammad. So he denied Islam. He, he was the, the one disguising himself, not the Ahlul Bayt Subhanallah, it's when someone sees something in himself, he, had to, he has to put it into others. And this is what Yazid is doing and what the enemies of Ahlul Bayt uh, sorry, what the enemies of Ahlul Bayt were doing. This is the type of corruption Imam Hussain had to face. The Muslim Ummah was deviated to the point when the commander of the faithful Ali Ibn Talib السلام, when he was mar martyred in the mihrab, in the place of prayer when the news reached Sham the people of Sham asked the messenger who brought the news Ali Ibn Talib used to pray? Wow, I mean this question really gives me the shivers because how, how were they Muslim? The commander of the faithful Prophet Muhammad says, Ana al babuha. I am the city of knowledge and Ali ibn Talib is its gate. How is this happening? You know, when, when, when they say, did Ali ibn Talib used to pray? Really? Is, is, is that a correct answer to ask about the commander of the faithful? However, or according to other narrations, the people that Yazid used to rule over in Sham, they used to pray behind Yazid, Salat al-Jum'ah, pray uh, Friday prayer on Wednesday while, uh, while Yazid was drunk. This is the people that used to live under the rule of Yazid. And yet people are coming to me and saying, or coming to the followers of Ahlul Bayt Islam, what was there for Imam al Hussein to save in Karbala? What was there for Hussein to save? I mean, are, are, for the people that do hear these historical facts, this is not something that we, you know, we, we make up as we go along. No, this is historical facts. If you go to the books of history, you'll find these evidences. But inshallah, we'll continue this, but after the short break. Uh, so stay tuned uh, and we'll come back to you shortly. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wassalatu wassalam ala ashraf al-anbiya al-mursaleen. Abu al-Qasim Muhammad wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam is the embodiment of justice. He is a part of a lineage that has its own history of bravery against oppression. His father Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Muslims and non-Muslims alike attest to that. George Jerdak, a popular Christian author with his book Imam Ali, the voice of human justice. In the popular quote by Imam Ali alayhi salam, People are of two kinds. They are either your brothers in faith or your equal in humanity. His son, Imam Ali Sajjad salam, has written volumes on every right you can think of and manifested it as the guide for human rights. And these are only a drop in the ocean of examples we can extract from the lives of the Ahlul Bayt salam, in addition to their stands which had shook the empires of tyranny and oppression. Now, but in contrast to the other Imams السلام, Imam al husseins stand was more of a visible one because his time was different. The period of time he was living in was more of a critical and sensitive one. And there was no option to passively allow Yazid to casually represent the face of Islam. Not only that, but its values. Not only for his time, but for the generations to come, including us. When it comes to having someone illegitimately represent your core values and what you ultimately stand for, it becomes a responsibility upon your shoulders to take a stand, to liberate yourself from that burden. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam taught us how to do just that, to be free, free from, free from the pressure, to follow oppressive leadership, become our own leaders become indestructible with our will, our passion, our sacrifice, and our love for that which we, which we stand for. Today, or even right this moment, when you flip through the channels or switch through the social media outlets, we are bombarded with too many political agendas, each with its own interests. And in the midst of all of this, we are being taught how to think and what to think. They are, it's almost as if they're taking away that will even to think for ourselves. And our thoughts have been subconsciously manipulated 
to like or dislike certain things, certain people, or even perhaps entire populations of people. Speaking firsthand as a Muslim woman, practicing the hijab as a minority, it becomes easy to reduce me in the media to a symbol. For example, this piece of cloth. And it may even be simple to reduce an entire religion, millions of Muslims, to let's say this piece of cloth, for example. It becomes, becomes easy to bash us all the time that way, to reduce us. When reduction happens, it becomes easy to target that specific group. And we notice that when every time the word terrorism is mentioned in the media, or even heard, we Muslims become terrified and wish it's not a Muslim. Now imagine the average person who has very limited knowledge on Islam. I'm not surprised there's all this misconception. There's all these negative stereotypes out there. Imam Hussein's السلام, role extends beyond the battlefield. It's up to us now to take him as a role model to become the leaders of today, to train and mentor the leaders of tomorrow in a world which is filled with tyranny and injustice. And inshallah, that will be our way to take the Ahlul Bayt as a whole and ensure that we continue their battle for justice. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, once again, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You were just presented with an interview uh, with uh, a sister who wanted to input uh, her ideas and the historical facts regarding Imam Hussain al-Islam reviving Islam. So we do thank you, uh, Sister Isra, uh, for your contribution. But before the break, I was talking about uh, how the Ummah was being drained of their religion. And uh, here with me, uh, Brother Hussain from the UK, uh, who has joined me in, uh, in the second part uh, of the episode. So let's welcome. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Hussain. How are you? Alhamdulillah. 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 I would like to condole you uh, on this uh, tragic occasion, the month of Muharram, uh, the month of sorrow, the month where uh, the holiest blood was shed in this very place, and the holiest women were taken captives from this very place. Uh, but, Brother, before the break, I, I mentioned uh, some historical facts. I would like to continue with uh, two or three narrations from the Sunni school of thought mm. uh, before we get into it. Uh, one of the students of Ahmed bin Hanbal, he asked Ahmed regarding Yazid. He says, I asked Ahmed regarding Yazid. Ahmed replied by saying, Yazid killed tens of the companions of the Holy Prophet, degraded Islam and its nation, and should never be taken as a reliable source mm. in transmitting hadith. This is in their books that Yazid is killed tens of the companions of Prophet Muhammad and did what he did in Mecca and Medina and all of this. Mm. Yet, people are saying that, you know what? He was a just leader. He was a leader of the Ummah. You can't talk about him. Uh, we go further. This is mentioned uh, in, uh, in Al-Sunnah by Abu Bakr al-Khalal. Commenting on this, Ibn Muflah al-Hanbali from the Hanbali school of thought, he states, this is a clear, uh, commenting on the previous uh, uh, quote, he says, this is a clear indication of Yazid's immorality. He comments again and says that this is a clear indication of Yazid's mm. immorality. We finish there. We move on to the establisher of the Wahhabi non-Islamic mm. school of thought. Ibn Taymiyyah himself states, do not curse Yazid by name. When I, when I read this, it actually you know, made me wonder on you know what's what's inside these people's brains or sorry in, in no one no one what Yazid has done as well I, how, how exactly could they? no 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 if, if we do read this is mentioned in the guideline mm -hmm. of the prophet's biography page 567 if you want you can go refer to this and you'll find these uh these quotes in that the, these narrations do not curse Yazid by name but simply say may Allah curse the oppressors it doesn't make any sense to me he goes further on saying the motive of Yazid and people like him are to be immoral people who seek to destruct their nation. Isn't this considered oppression? I mean, the, no, the, in, in, the, in the greatest form of fact, is, I mean, the is. one who seeks to mm. destruct m mentally and terrorize his nation. Isn't that oppression to the nation and oppression to Islam? You can see it as well uh, in Al Mas'udi, 
the, the Islamic historian, he says Yazid's officials and governors were, were influenced by his corruption during his rule. Singing uh, spread throughout Medina. Musical instruments were used, sold and brought publicly. People also used to drink wine in public. Wow. And this this is during I mean exactly during Yazid's time and they are and like they're asking us not to curse him publicly. I mean f by forget name? about no 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 forget about cursing him publicly. That's a different story. By I name. Mean, Allah subhanahu mm. yeah, no, no, when when he says mm. don't curse him by name, I mean they're legit trying to make people laugh at them. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's it's funny to see this nonsense. How are they trying to confuse themselves? Sorry, uh, how are they trying to make themselves confident with, with their books? when they have contradictions within their exact books. But um, respective viewers, if you do want to join the discussion, fee, uh, feel free uh, to call in on uh, the free uh, number, toll-free number via Viber, uh, or your telephone uh, in uh, the provided numbers uh, below the screen. However, uh, I would like to mention some of the stands that Imam Hussain Ali Islam stood against uh, you know, Imam Hussain al-Islam, if we looked at his life, especially the sacrifices in Karbala, we find that he stood against every act of discrimination against humanity. For example, take the first act. Well, take the first act into, into consideration. And that's the need to make a stand in the face of evilness and against evilness. Imam Hussain saw that the Islamic nation was being drowned and hatred and oppression and the corruption spread faster than a disease in a nation or in a country. You know, when a disease comes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, remove all the afflictions from uh, the true Muslims and uh, the Shia of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam. When a disease hits a country, you'll see it spreading very fast. Mm -hmm. Yet, nice. we find that the corruption and the evilness that was spreading during the time of Yazid and during the, the Umayyad dynasty, it was spreading faster than a disease. You just mentioned publicly drinking, selling it's musical instruments ridiculous. in the city of Rasulullah. And they ask the us... The city of Islam, where, city where of it was Islam. established. And yeah. people ask us Shia, why or, or what was at stake that Imam Hassan had to, you know, rise and sacrifice himself? I mean, you tell me what wasn't at stake. You tell us how did Yazid serve Islam. Then we'll tell you why Imam Hassan alayhi salam rose against Yazid and it's, it's obvious everyone knows I mean when someone tells you the sun is up it's daytime when someone tells you the sun has set down it's nighttime well put it, it is that it, obvious it, it's, it's that, it's that obvious yes, you yes, don't need exactly. any proof you know to, to tell you that you know what it's nighttime right now it, because it's dark you know what I mean even though in Yazid's case there is countless proof of what he's done countless proof countless unimaginable uh, un proof. unimaginable proof but if we looked at it Islam yeah. ran through the, 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 the veins, the blood, the body, the souls of Ahlul Bayt to the point where it became family, the Ahlul Bayt. It wasn't, just like a, it wasn't just a religion that they brought forth for the Ummah and everybody embraced it. And everybody lived it ran through happily the Bayt. ever after. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No. Ahlul Bayt Islam, it ran through their veins to the point where defending it, even if that means putting their lives on the line, so, so, so be it. Muhammad well, Islam says, you know, if, if the religion of my grandfather, the religion of Allah, will not spread unless the swords are on my body, then let it be. Then come take my body. Ten, yes. come take, because Imam Hussain Islam knew what was going to happen in the future. When yesterday we talked um. about how Prophet Muhammad prophesied that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Shia. Now it will create Shia. You know what I mean? Mm. So these simple facts, if we do get to ponder upon them, will actually become very, very, you know, will, will reform ourselves. Mm. And that's in tomorrow's topic, which I will talk about. Inshallah. But, uh, uh, sorry, I, I spoke a lot, but inshallah, <laughs> I'll give you the chance uh, after the break. Uh, so uh, tune in. Respected viewers, do stay tuned after the break for we, inshallah, uh, continue discussion. The break we presented with uh, is a report, report uh, recorded by Brother Hussein in the streets of Karbala during the month of Muharram. So to that break, stay tuned. It's been about a week now. They've been preparing the shrines for the month of Muharram. They're preparing the carpets, the building work, the, the sawad, the black cloth for the month of Muharram. And inshallah tomorrow night, they will be changing the flags on top of the dome of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein and Abu Fadl al-Abbas from the red flag to the black flag. 
to commemorate the month of Muharram and the day of Ashura. One thing that many people usually miss out or usually forget is that these are not just the graves of the Imams, Muhammad Hussein and Abu Fadl Abbas. The Battle of Karbala actually happened where we are standing now. This is the ground of the battlefield where Abu Abdullah Hussein was murdered by tyrants, where Abu Fadl Abbas' hands were cut off by tyrants. This is where Abdullah Radhi was killed by a, a three-headed arrow. We need to remember this when we are in Karbala. We need to mourn the Shahada of Karbala by remembering what they went through, by commemorating their deaths. And that's what these people are doing here. These millions and millions of mourners and visitors, they come to commemorate and mourn the Shahada of the Ahlul Bayt and the oppression of the Ahlul Bayt. The servants of Mount Hussein, they pour the tea for the Zawar, for the millions of Zawar. There's countless barakat in this tea because it is in the name of Imam Hussein. And Alhamdulillah, we have been granted the chance to drink the tea of Imam Hussein during the visitation of Muharram. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Hussain is here with me in the studio, yet he was outside uh, recording the atmosphere of Karbala in the month of Muharram. I do encourage you, if you have any comments, if you have any questions to ask, uh, to comment on anything that we have said uh, to clear stuff up, please do call in uh, through the numbers you are provided with on the bottom of the screen. Uh, for inshallah, we will have a better understanding through uh, your comments, your debates, your discussions, uh, and your questions. Uh, but before the break, we talked how uh, the Muslims were being deviated, and that's what caused Imam Hussain alayhi salam to rise against uh, the Umayyad dynasty. Uh, Brother Hussain, I, I uh, talked uh, a bit of a lot uh, before the break, uh, but not enough. I say uh, your uh, blessing. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, your presence is is blessing. But if if we Looked at history, history is filled with evidences, as you mentioned, you know, uncounted and numerous evidences regarding why Imam Hassan Ali Salam rose. Mm. I mean, the first thing was to revive Islam. And when people ask, you guys give Ayn Talib a very high status, it's not us, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. is in the state. Prophet Muhammad himself states to Ali, Oh, Ali, if I didn't fear for my ummah, I would have stated something in your honor. This, I would have stated something the same as the Christians have stated in Jesus. Mm. But I don't want to deviate the Ummah. This is the status of Ibn Talib alayhi salam for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Prophet Muhammad. So we do find, and I apologize uh, for not properly narrating uh, that tradition. Uh, we inshallah get references for that tradition inshallah. and narrate it once again. But Ibn Athir, just to comment on uh, your earlier uh, sure. uh, about Yazid and, mm. and uh, publicly drinking and, and, and musical instruments. Ibn Athir, a very well-known historian, he says it is narrated that Yazid was well-known for playing stringed instruments, heavy wine drinking, singing, hunting, occupying himself with lads, female singers and dogs. I mean, very, I wanna, very, very Islamic, is that? I, I, I just want to <laughs> pause right there. Alcoholic, singing, instruments, hunting, uh, hunting, sorry, occupying himself with lads, women, and dogs. What an Islamic leader. <laughs> no, seriously, what an Islamic leader. A person who does this doesn't deserve the title of Islam. And actually, he, he calls out that no revelations revealed and no news has come. This is why the Muslim Ummah was deviated. <laughs> 
the, the greatest of the sins which is not mentioned is the cursing of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Oh yeah, definitely. No, as in, like you mentioned earlier, before the break, you were saying mm -hmm. the status of Amir al-Mu'mineen and why they, why people ask us why we elevate him so high, even though mm. it's Allah who has elevated him. Definitely. But we see in many a hadith that the Prophet himself tells us the greatness of Amir al-Mu'mineen and the greatness of the followers of the Amir al-Mu'mineen. Yes. So there's one hadith uh, mm. of the Prophet. He says, Ya Ali, abshir fa innaka wa ashabuka wa shi'atuka fi jannah The Messenger of Allah says Ali, uh, to Imam Ali, Glad tidings, O oh Ali, verily you and your companions and your Shia will be in paradise. Wow. Now, now, it's an honor for me to be called the Shia of Ali. It's an, it's an honor. I mean, and then I see a hadith like this. مِن شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ Let us not forget yesterday, uh, sorry, this morning, uh, we got a phone, uh, not a phone call, sorry, a question that was sent. He says, you Shia claim that uh, uh, Imam Hussein saved Islam. Uh, yes. I mean, please tell me how he didn't save Islam. And actually, I, the reply came is that we are actually honored the people call us Shia because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's, it's an honor. An honor. and one of his followers is Ibrahim they say Ibrahim is, is following you know Prophet Muhammad Prophet Abraham had his own lane <laughs> in, in <laughs> Islam Prophet Muhammad came to f finalize and seal the prophets you know what I mean and he came before following in the footsteps of Ali bin Talib alayhi salam that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to say. But in these days and, and prior to these days, uh, we find that uh, one of the most beautiful illustrations uh, that were illustrated by Muhammad uh, is his stance against uh, injustice and his stance uh, for the neglection against the neglection of human rights. Uh, one of the most utmost important illustrations by Muhammad is when Al Harun Nazid al Riyahi was sent by Abdullah bin Ziyad, may Allah curse him, to stop the caravan of Hussein mm. and to you know reroute him to a different route than Kufa to make him go to Karbala. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Karbala for Hussein it's He's not the greatest Hur, it's not uh, mm. you know Abdullah bin Ziyad, may Allah curse him or anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned Hussein to be in Karbala. Mm. But however when upon the time that Har reached Imam Hussein, his, his horses were thirsty, his forces were thirsty, and he was thirsty himself. The first moment that Imam Hussein, the first act that he did was offer water. water. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And this is why we find on the 10th of Muharram, Har leaving the lines of the enemies and joining the lines of Imam Hussein. Because he realized that the man that he's fighting is a man of piety. Mm -hmm. He has done nothing wrong. All he wants was to lead the Ummah to the straight path. How is that difficult for the Ummah? <laughs> for someone to lead them to the straight path. Yet, we find Muhammad Islam standing alone in the land of Karbala. We have approximately a couple of minutes left. I would like to uh, hand it over to you uh, to conclude uh, the episode tonight. Uh, we have two more minutes. So please go ahead, Brother Hussain. Um. Well, thank you very much, Brother Ahmed. Uh, no, I mean, thank you for joining the, us. The points that have been made are nowhere near enough the points that should be made in the greater scheme of things. Like the, the, the hadith about Amir al muminin that we have mentioned. Oh, yes. They don't do justice to who Amir al muminin is. No, yes, not, we not mentioned like a drop A in drop the in the ocean. It's not, it doesn't do any justice. Now, I could sit here and give you hadith after yes. hadith, but there's some people who won't help, they won't change anyone's mind. Mm -hmm. Some people will stick to the comments that we received this morning, yes. which was, why, what was the other comment? Do the you other comment uh, or the other question that was <laughs> asked is that uh, the sacrifice of Muhammad, I can't really, I was really it was tired. A, it was a very mockery uh, of a comment. Yes, yes I yes, mean, it was, uh, oh, it was about bid'ah and you guys, when you do this, it's bid'ah. Yeah. I mean, when Imam Hussein reviving Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yesterday, we talked about uh, mm. Uh, the verse found in the 32 chapter of the Holy Quran, or the second chapter, chapter. Chapter 22, verse 32. Verse yes, 32, yes. when Allah says, Surely the one who revives the rituals of Allah is from the piety of the hearts. <laughs> we are reviving the rituals of Allah. Islam is here presented by Imam Hussain alayhi salam. It's Yet, easy. We, we make it difficult for ourselves. We do. The, the, the Allah has given the Rasala to the Prophet, and the Prophet has given it to us through the Ahlul Bayt. Definitely. 
They're all created from the nur of Allah. It's clear cut, it's simple. It's all in ahadith, Sunni and Shia books. Now why there is this whole dispute? Why there's these mockery comments? We, we, it doesn't really fit, it into, doesn't fit into our yeah. minds. But uh, due to the shortage of time, uh, shortage of time, uh, we are unable to uh, continue Inshallah further. in the coming shows. Inshallah, Inshallah. In, in the upcoming uh, nights, we will get to talk about uh, the life of Imam Islam prior and up to the 10th of Muharram. Uh, so I encourage you in the upcoming nights to call in and let us know what you think about the discussion, the previous or uh, the current discussion. Uh, and do not forget and do not miss the opportunity of visiting the shrine of Imam Hussain Islam or having the <coughs> chance to visit the shrine of Imam Hussain, the father of martyrs and his loyal brother, Abdul Fadl Abbas, in our morning live show, 5 a.m. Karbala time, uh, that's 9 or 10 p.m. Uh, DC time. I encourage you, I encourage you to not miss that show because you are provided with an opportunity like no other visiting the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein and his loyal brother, Abel Fadl Abbas. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for that.